Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Small Screen Maniac. I am Constance Miller, your host. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing Agatha all along from Disney Plus and Marvel. And this is going to be a little bit spoilerish. So if you haven't watched the show thus far, go watch it, come back, watch this video, and let's discuss in the comments below. If you have watched it and know the spoilers, then let's have a discussion down below. Just make sure you're marking it spoiler. In the first episode, we're introduced to Agnes O'Connor, who is a police detective in Westview. Now, we all know that she's actually Agatha Harkness, and she's under a spell that Wanda Maximoff put on her at the end of WandaVision three years earlier. While she investigates the mystery death of a Jane Doe, she is also introduced to and is familiar with an FBI agent brought in on the case and they begin a little bit of a banter whereas this FBI agent seems to know who Agnes really is. Meanwhile somebody breaks into Agnes's house and she confronts them and arrests them and finds out it's a teenage boy and his motivation for doing what he's doing is unknown but once they get to the precinct things start to unravel. Agnes soon realizes that something isn't right and Rio Vidal shows up again and tells her who she really is and soon the spell is broken and Agnes goes through all the incarnations that she went through while during Wanda's spell. And eventually her true self is there. And she realizes that she has no powers. So therefore she must embark on the witch's road. A journey that is perilous, dangerous, often deadly, but will grant you what you want once you survive and get to the end. Episode 2 Agatha knows that she has to form a coven in order to travel the witch's road. And She's really not one to make friends, so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, but Teen is there to help, and help he does. So they begin by recruiting Lilia, a divination witch, Jen, a potions witch, Alice, a protection witch, and everything seems hunky-dory. It isn't until they all gather that they realize that they need a green witch. And the only green witch that Agatha knows of is Rio, and she doesn't want anything to do with her because Rio tried to kill her. And Agatha insisted that she wait until she gets the power so she can defend herself better. So she wants nothing to do with Rio. And so she's like, well, I do know somebody, Mrs. Hart, from Wanda Spell. And her name is actually Sharon Davis, and she reminds Agatha of that 
when Agatha invites her to this party. And being that Sharon is a skilled gardener, Agatha figured that that would be a good way to replace a green witch. So it soon turns out that a group called the Salem Seven is coming after Agatha. And they want retribution. For what? We'll find out in a little bit. But it's up to the coven to scramble together, sing the, the Ballad of the Witch's Road, and open the gates to the Witch's Road, which they do. And just in time, because Salem Seven is knocking on Agatha's door. Episode 3 The Coven stumbles upon a house. And in that house is going to be a trial. And they have to defeat this trial in order to move forward down the witch's road. And they're not sure entirely what it entails. They do notice that a phase of the moon is present right at the front of the house. Which is very interesting. I like that touch. Once inside, the trial puts them into a 1990s high society suburban household. And it's soon discovered that it, this is a trial by water. And each of them encounters a hallucination which is set to off-put them so that they can't defeat the trial. Well, it's up to the potions witch, Jen, in order to make things happen so they can break the trial and escape down to the witch's road once again to encounter the next trial, which actually happens at the cost of Sharon's life. The next house. Oh, this is interesting. It's a trial by fire. And the coven is transported into like a 1960s psychedelic era. And I should probably rank like what I think the best looks are from each episode. Um, because some people had some really good looks, and some people don't. Uh, Teen, unfortunately, well, he had a good look in, in the last episode. But this episode, it's a little bit, um, you can tell he's wearing a wig. Um, but this trial is all about protection. And that is Alice's specialty. And when Teen plays a certain record backward, it summons a demon. And the song is actually the Ballad of the Witch's Road, a recording that Alice's mother had recorded in order to protect herself and her family, who is cursed. And that is why Alice's mother takes her own life. So eventually they realize that after the record is broken because of the demon in the room and thoughts of betrayal within the coven from Agatha and Rio, we're getting to the point where the group has to perform the song which they're in a recording studio, mind you. What a coincidence. And so everybody takes positions at a certain instrument or the microphone, and as they perform the ballad, according to Alice's mother's version, 
It's clear that it's not powerful enough, so Alice has to step up to the plate, and she's on piano and vocals, and she goes to town, and eventually the curse is broken, and they're able to escape into the piano down to a staircase back to the witch's room. This time, no casualties, thankfully. Okay, this is why I should take notes when I do videos instead of just rambling. It's because I forgot that they had to summon another green witch, which happens to be Rio, um, after Sharon's death. Um, my bad, I'm sorry. The coven is back on the road and they're just wondering what it's going to take to get to the next trial, but the Salem Seven has come after Agatha. The door was left open and it's soon revealed that the Salem Seven are the children of the witches that Agatha killed in her coven, including her own mother. And each of them resembles a different animal. So they've been tracking the coven this entire time and have been waiting for the moment to strike, which is getting close. So the coven gets together and does a broom ritual and, and Teen is just like, wow, this is kind of cool. Can I take part? And Sorry, there's a fly in my midst. And they all get brooms and take off into the sky, flying above the road, avoiding the Salem Seven. And eventually they are drawn back down by the road. And in a great moment of hilarity, Rio cackles like a witch that is enjoying painful ecstasy. <laughs> oh, it was glorious. It was a great moment. And they are brought un into their next trial. And that's a trial of spirits. The house is centered upon 1980s a uh, horror filled spookiness and it, it's kind of a scary episode. It's very dark as far as visuals. Uh, they didn't film with much light in this episode. Um, and a Ouija board comes into play and It comes to be that the Ouija board states that Agatha cannot be trusted, that she must be destroyed, and the spirit of Agatha, Agatha's mother shows up and possesses her body, which makes her do creepy things, and the coven is just like ready to just like axe Agatha. Like, get her out of the way. We don't need her. She's going to kill us all. And that is how they turn on each other. And eventually, they do all seem to turn on each other. Well, especially Agatha. And then Alice steps in and uses her magic to protect Agatha and expels the spirit of Agatha's mother. But that brings about power to Agatha and that power drains 
the life of Alice, and she soon is dead. Angered by this, Teen is just furious and pissed off, and eventually it turns out that he shows his own power. After Agatha says, you're like your mother. Bingo, we finally hit it. Teen is Billy, one of the sons of Wanda and Vision in WandaVision and as well as Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Aged up a little bit because the kids did jump in age quite a bit of times in the series WandaVision. So it's no surprise that he's a teenager now. And he sports a crown similar to his mother's. It wasn't in full display, so you couldn't really see all of it, but there were certain elements that were there that it was just like, yes, bitch, that is my dude. And I'm so happy that Billy is becoming Wiccan. Not in the religious sense, the character Wiccan. And I can't wait to see where it goes from here. It's going to be so exciting. So we've been through the trials of water, fire, and spirit. There is four more episodes. And I think the next two episodes are going to entail trials by air and earth. And then we're going to have a two-part finale. That is my prediction for the series. Let me know what you all think in the comments below. I'm loving this. And I love the ties to actual witchcraft. I'm wicked. So to hear about the phases of the moon, uh, the five elements, the maiden, the witch, or the maiden, the mother, and the crone. All those things tie into actual witchcraft. Which, if you're not a believer, I know that's going to be difficult for you to understand. But it's not all... I mean, this is glorified. This is glorified magic. And tremendously fictionalized. But some of the details that are brought in do tie to actual witchcraft. Which is not evil. It's not satanic. So, so yeah. That's my thoughts so far on... Agatha all along. I'm excited to see the rest of the series. I um, am excited to see more of Wigan and how he's going to be brought into the Young Avengers because that is in the works. I hope they haven't canceled that project Ugh. because we need more Wigan. And we need Wiccan's boyfriend, hopefully. Yes. That needs to happen. <laughs> so, don't be afraid to like and comment. Uh, share your thoughts down below. Um, if you're inclined to help the channel grow, you can do so by following the links in the description, which also supports my husband. And, as always, Love and light to you.